Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon and today I want to talk about the top 10 best films of the decade. So as 2019 was ending, we all took a moment to realize that the whole decade of the 2010s was ending as well. But then I took a moment longer to realize that a hundred years of mainstream film is ending as well. Before the 1920s, film wasn't for everybody. It was just a very niche thing that only the elite could see. But in the 20s, it spread out into the mainstream and became a part of our culture. And from there, it blew up to be the biggest form of entertainment in the country for decades. So looking at it that way, we didn't just end the year. We didn't just end the decade. We ended the century of great movies. So since August I've been working on these lists trying to make the top 10 best films for each decade since the 1920s until the 2010s. I've watched movies, I've rewatched them, I've slaved over these lists trying to decide how to exactly make these top 10 lists perfect. And no, these lists aren't going to be perfect. They're as good as I could make them, but they're not going to be everybody's opinion. It's hard enough to make a top 10 list for a specific year. Making one for a whole decade, you're cutting out a bunch of really, really, really good movies. You might have a hundred movies, you're all vying for one spot on this list. But in the end, I could only pick 10 for each decade. So I hope Hope you guys like the list but keep in mind they're not gonna be perfect I'm gonna disagree with you on some things and I haven't even seen every movie to ever come out ever I'm sorry I might just have missed it I've watched a lot of movies recently guys I'm sorry I tried to get them all I just couldn't so please don't hate me just leave your top 10 list in the comments below and we can talk about it there and also please like and share that helps me out a lot and if you're new here subscribe but that's enough for me let's get to this list number 10 Life of Pi. Life of Pi is a 2012 film directed by Ang Lee. It's about a teenage boy being stranded in the middle of the ocean in a lifeboat with nothing but water and animals around him. It's one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. I'm always critical of CGI, but the CGI and the visuals in this movie are breathtaking and astounding no matter how large or small the screen is. You could be watching this on your phone and still just be amazed. But it doesn't just take great visuals to make a movie, it takes a great story too, and this one has that. Is it a fantasy? Is it an allegory? Is it a tragedy? Is it all of the above? Probably. But whatever it is, it is amazing and I adore this movie. Number 9. Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom is a 2012 film written and directed by Wes Anderson. The plot follows two middle school lovers as they run away to be together. And in traditional Wes Anderson style, it's very funny, very quirky, and just a lot of fun to look at. It's got great acting from the kids, but also from Ed Norton, Bruce Willis, Bill Murray. But above all that, it perfectly captures the spirit of being a middle schooler. If I had seen this as a middle schooler, it would have been my favorite movie of all time. I love the feel of this movie. I love the passion of this movie. It's just so much fun, so funny, and just great to look at. Number eight, Black Swan. Black Swan is a 2010 film directed by Darren Aronofsky with a great cast of Natalie Portman, Mila Kunis, and Winona Ryder. It's like a psychological thriller about the stress that the mind and the body goes under being a prima ballerina. All the competition, the backstabbing, the abuse that these people go through, it's crazy. It's already a dark subject matter, but then you throw in some twisted Aronofsky imagery and this movie is amazing. I'm also very critical of dancing in movies and the dancing in this is actually pretty good. The acting, the writing, the directing all came together amazingly well to make a great film. Number seven, Django Unchained. Django Unchained is a 2012 film written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. It's starring Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Samuel L. Jackson. And whenever people talk about this movie, they always want to talk about DiCaprio because he is amazing in this movie. But he isn't maybe even the best actor. I think Samuel L. Jackson was just as good, if not better, in this movie. And across the board, the acting, as is normal in Tarantino movies, is just awesome. Of course, it's got the Tarantino writing as well, which leads to great witty dialogue and then overblown action sequences that are just so much fun to watch. And then of course DiCaprio's great scene where he cuts his hand, you've all heard about it. It is phenomenal. It's just as good as everybody says it is. It's cheesy and over the top like Tarantino always is, but it's just a great movie that you can't describe any other way than just a lot of fun. Number six, Shutter Island. Shutter Island is a 2010 film directed by Martin Scorsese, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Ruffalo, and Ben Kingsley. And if you don't know anything about this movie, 
don't try to find out anything about this movie, just watch it. This movie is just amazing, from the writing, to the directing, to the acting, to the nuance, to all the little subtle things. You'll need to watch this movie multiple times to get everything. And that's my favorite kind of movie, I love that, and this is one of the best movies like that, in my opinion. And then of course, DiCaprio leads this great cast, because as we just talked about him, Django and Jane, he's a great actor, he's one of the best actors working today, and he's phenomenal as usual in this. Number 5. Interstellar. Interstellar is a 2014 film written and directed by Christopher Nolan and starring Matthew McConaughey. And it's a sci-fi epic that mixes great and subtle CGI with a phenomenal story. And probably the best thing about this movie is actually its soundtrack. The music is amazing and just... Uh. <laughs> you don't need to watch this movie to listen to this music. Just maybe don't be on the highway listening to it in your car because you might you might start speeding a little bit. It's such a beautiful movie with the imagery of outer space, with the CGI mixed with the practical effects of the models just melted together perfectly. It's probably the best CGI I've ever seen and it's used in such a good way in the best looking space movie I've ever seen. Just because it's a beautiful movie doesn't mean it can't also have a great story and since it was written by Nolan, we know that it does. Number four. Birdman. Birdman is a 2014 film written and directed by Alejandro Inarritu, and it's starring Michael Keaton, Zach Galifianakis, Ed Norton, and Emma Stone. Like Black Swan, this is a psychological thriller about the mental toll it takes to be in this kind of industry. Being in the spotlight, being under this pressure from the work environment, it's all so much. But this is told from the perspective of Michael Keaton playing a has-been, somebody who was a great character for a long time but no longer has that popularity. And he's fighting desperately to get that back, and this movie is great for the story, it's great for the acting, but man, the visuals in this movie, again, are amazing. This movie is filmed and edited for the most part to look like one continuous shot. This trick had been used in films before like Rope, but this was the best version of it to date. It was practically seamless, it looked great. And on top of that, the directing itself is just so smooth and beautiful and artistic and I love it. The acting as a whole is great, but this is also my favorite Ed Norton performance of his career and might be my favorite Michael Keaton performance of his career as well. This whole movie is just so good, I love every second of it, it is so original, so special, and such just a great movie. Number three, Whiplash. Whiplash is a 2014 film written and directed by Damien Chazelle, starring Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. And J.K. Simmons might as well win Actor of the Decade Award just for this film because Oh my god, is he good. So the plot of this movie is fairly simple. Miles Teller plays a drummer trying to make this prestigious group of jazz players. This group is led by J.K. Simmons, who's very well known and prestigious in his field, but he's also kind of crazy. And it leads to so much great drama, so much great acting. The writing in this movie is also phenomenal, but it's all overshadowed by the fact that J.K. Simmons delivers the performance of his life in this film. Now, I like J.K. Simmons, but I'm not normally putting him in a top 10 list for best actors of all time or anything. But this performance by J.K. Simmons is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, acting performances of all time. I'm not exaggerating that at all. He's just phenomenal in this movie, and I can't find a better way to say it than that. He's just amazing. You don't need to like drumming. You don't need to like jazz music. This movie will make you love and at least kind of understand both. And on top of all of that, it will just make you understand how great this movie is. It is so good. <laughs> Number two. Her. Her is a 2013 film written and directed by Spike Jones, starring Joaquin Phoenix, Scarlett Johansson, and Amy Adams. And I cannot say a bad thing about this movie. It is perfect. This movie follows a man who's very depressed because he's in a separation leading to an eventual divorce. The man ends up getting a new operating system, voiced by Scarlett Johansson, who delivers the performance of her lifetime. And this movie is so emotionally intelligent. Believe me, if you're going through a breakup, don't watch it, or maybe you should watch it. Regardless, you're gonna cry. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix is another great actor, and Scarlett Johansson is a phenomenal actress who's been underrated for years and is finally getting recognition, but this movie isn't necessarily getting that recognition, whereas this is probably the best performance of her career. This movie may have actually fallen apart without Scarlett Johansson's acting. She is the glue that holds this movie together. It's phenomenally acted, very well written, and the directing is so good that you almost don't notice that it's a movie. It just feels like a real life event, and that's the best thing you can say about a movie is that it feels real. And this is one of the realest movies I've ever seen, even if it is a futuristic sci-fi romance. It is amazing, it's phenomenal, and you should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it or even heard of it yet. And the number one film for the 2010s is Inception. The 2010s started with a bang, the best movie coming out in the first year. Inception is a 2010 film written and directed by Christopher Nolan. It's got his best cast of all time with Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, 
Tom Hardy, Marion Cotillard, Killian Murphy, Michael Caine, the list goes on and on and on. It's an intelligent movie, but it's not hard to follow. It's got great acting, great directing, and great writing, a very interesting and original story. And of course, that whole dream within a dream within a dream thing has shaped pop culture. The word Inception doesn't even mean what people think it means anymore. It's got great acting with great chemistry between DiCaprio and Cotillard, Hardy and Gordon Levitt, and just everybody in general. I can't possibly say every great thing about this movie in this video. I don't have enough time, but you can't talk about Inception without talking about the ending. Because the ending of Inception is one of the most iconic endings to a film of all time and certainly the most iconic moment of the 2010s. So that's my list. I hope you guys liked it. But of course, if you've got your own favorite movie that didn't make the list or if you've got a whole entire list of your own, make sure to post in the comments below and we can talk about it there. If you're new here, please subscribe and also make sure to like and share. Thanks guys. Bye.